Today's guest is the executive director of Folly Fest, which is located in the village of Gagetown, New Brunswick, and which takes place on June 28th to the 30th. And on today's episode, we talk about all things Folly Fest, past, present, and future. So put your hands together for Paul McAllister. So what's up? Oh, just plugging away. All sorts of stuff is happening. You know, we're uh, I'm, I'm here with Shannon um, in the office today, and we've got all sorts of projects we're we're launching, and, and you know, it's it's that time of year. It's crunch time. So when you say you got projects launching, is that uh, is that folly related right now, or do you got other things on the go? Well, yeah, I mean, I got a few other things on the go, but uh, folly is definitely 100. percent Well, let's say 90 percent focus right now uh there are a few herman things that are kind of i'm trying to get out of the way before folly fest kind of really takes over for the rest of the month but um, yeah. today's list is definitely heavy heavy on folly yeah two weeks mm-hmm. away so you're probably pretty hey, two, cr- crunch two time. weeks and 12 hours thanks <laughs> <laughs> get it right yeah yeah those 12 hours matter <laughs> big time yeah so what exactly is your role with Folly Fest? Uh, I guess if you want to give me a title, I would be the executive director. Okay. So what, yeah. what's involved in that title? Uh, so it's, it basically, uh, there was a core group of us that started Feels Good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and over the years, um, they, like, you know, myself, and there was Courtney, uh, and Mumble and and a fellow named John Dennis, our mysterious graphics guy, and mm-hmm. and, a, and a fellow named Gil, who was part of an art collective that uh, I'm part of called the Big Three. And over the years, they've all kind of like taken a step back, and I haven't. And so that's mm-hmm. what that basically entails: is that I'm still just plugging away on it. Uh, and there's a whole like there's a bunch of fresh new blood. We have like a really strong board of like 12 people new people joining all the time um we have uh two great summer employees uh abby and shannon and then penny stevens works for this too um so i mean it's a really really solid crew and it's it's fun to watch it evolve yeah absolutely uh-huh. so you've been involved with folly fest since day one eh? since day one yeah it was um there was a, it was a core group of us that came up with the idea of uh promoting a festival um to sell beer <laughs> that works well it works great but it was so i mean to to give to explain that a bit more um when feels good started uh, we were working very closely with Picaroons, uh and they were supporting all of our uh visual arts and music events uh and they um offered to do a contract group uh the feels good and pure pilsner um and to promote the brew we were like this is great how are we going to promote it what should we do i was like we should do a um like a a local collection of local bands like a cd and give it away with the four packs and it's like oh that's a great idea how are we going to get the music for the cd to give away the four packs well why don't we throw a festival and record the festival Hmm. and that's where folly fest came from so the first folly fest you recorded the entire festival Oh no, that never happened. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that just so, like we just kind of got so focused on throwing a festival that we right. completely forgot about recording it at all. Uh, we only started recording <laughs> Follies um, like maybe six years ago. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. So that was the original idea, but it just kind of took off and grew so quickly that it took a back burner as the idea. 
yeah, yeah well it was it was more the first year it was just like um you know there's there's the classic mindset when you go in to throw a festival that um well not that it's easy but that you can do it and not lose your mind right <laughs> um, you're like yeah you know it's gonna be hard work and everything but uh yeah today we'll get it done and a couple hundred people <laughs> show up and we'll have a great party in a field or something like that and, uh, right that is not how it goes the first time you try to do it especially if you have no experience so it's not just putting up a stage and throwing a band on it Oh goodness no! So we were um, <laughs> we were so caught up with the uh, technicalities, and we were doing it on Crab Mountain, uh, which right. is a snow hill. So the insurance was way more complicated, and, and there was a hurricane and and uh, all this crazy stuff that we had no plan for and no idea how to handle. So uh, the idea of recording Folly Fest at that it's amazing we even got pictures. Um, <laughs> yeah, like it was like the fact that the the tent didn't fly off the hill was right. uh you know just pure pure luck um, right. and the, and the fact that pick rooms then said all right let's try it again after it was like i mean to be honest the first volley fest was a catastrophic failure as far right. as, as far as you can think like financially um <laughs> weather wise just you know people had fun that were there but there was probably 40 people there you know yeah and then they said, okay, well, no, you, you do it again. And, and so we did it again. And, um, so it worked out really, really well because the, the Feels Good and Peel Pilsner as a contract brew essentially paid for the loss of Folly Fest. So people that were drinking the Feels Good beer were fueling the festival, which was a really cool kind of full cycle thing, right? It was, it was really mm -hmm. neat. Yeah. So that was kind of the inspiration to keep it going. Like, even though it, like you said, it kind of failed and was a flop the first year. You were able to keep it going after that because of just the the spirit of it. Well, yeah, I mean the I, I don't know. Uh, well, I mean you know you know me and you know a mumble and and, and Courtney and and uh, we're all really really stubborn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so we don't we don't give up on stuff easy, and we kind of keep our head down and keep going and keep going and. And, uh, you know, it's, it has been like a long trudge, you know, like festivals aren't an easy thing to get into, but it's just such a good community and the feeling you get on the festival ground, seeing everyone smiling and happy to see each other is like just so invaluable that we all just like 11 years later, we're all still doing it. Yeah. It's kind of like a passion project in a friends, family reunion type event. Exactly. And every year, like, so like we've, we've essentially hit like our sweet spot, I think for, for like attendance, it's, you know, it's still got a really good community feel, but it's still big enough to be like, all right, this is, a, this is an event, this is happening. Um, mm -hmm. And the one thing that's happening is we're seeing our core organizer group grow and grow and grow. Like the more people that have been going for years are saying like, you know what, I want to pitch in this year and I want to win the hands and, and, um, and so we're getting a lot more of those. And a lot, like if you talk to Tanya Beers, we're at like 90% return volunteer kind of thing. It's, it's great. It's really, it's really nice. That's awesome. So at the start, you mentioned how it sort of started with feels good. So can you explain just for a second what exactly feels good is? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so feels good. Um, originally, back in the, in the dawn of social media, uh, feels good was a site we decided to start here in the Maritimes as a networking site for musicians and artists. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was the big three, the collective, uh, which is four of us, um, two of which are out in Montreal doing their own amazing thing with cooking and et cetera. And then both Dennis and I are still here in Fredericton. Um, but the idea was we would do this uh, and because we were artists and we loved going to festivals and we all of our friends were musicians and we wanted to take part in some ways. So we asked if we can start painting on stage with them. Uh, and so we started painting on stage and we were like, we should figure out a way to network this more. So we started Feels Good. Uh, so artists put up their art, musicians put up their music and then connected about like album art and all this fun stuff. And uh, for about five years, I'd say the website was the main focus mm -hmm. uh, and the events we did was to celebrate the content of the website 
But as Facebook became the Walmart-esque giant it is today, all other social media platforms slowly, slowly got um, like sucked into it. So that's why you know now Feels Good is on Facebook, just because no one goes to any other site. And, you know, yeah, not not exactly. Not, obviously, people do, but you know, you know what I mean. Um, not really. Yeah. Well, so. Like, <laughs> Yeah, well, a lot of people just kind of like spend their day browsing and, and browsing on, on the one site. It's where you get your content, right? Like mm -hmm. news and stuff. And, and, and you do see a shift happening today with the, with the evils of the, the big corporation slowly being exposed. But, you know, right. anyway, we're getting a little off top. <laughs> <laughs> we can get back to that. Cool, yeah. I, I do find it fascinating, you know. It's, it's an interesting thing. It really mm. is. Yeah, big time. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of how feels good started, uh, as we kind of went along, you know, maybe six months into it, Mumble, uh, who, um, plays in a number of, of bands around the province and, and I met him in St. Andrews and he decided to get involved and Courtney, uh, hopped on board for the first uh, few events and, um, and we have been doing all of our events except for the house party every year for the last 11 years. Uh, which is just wild to think of, especially when you think of, you know, what, what happens in, in a decade, you know, like that mm. we're all still plugging away at this. It just baffles the mind. Yeah. And you guys do the Christmas party and like yeah, how many, just, how many different events are there? Well, I mean, our big events, there's like the feels good Christmas party, uh, the feels good bond spiel. Uh, we used to do the feels good houseboat party, but we uh, stopped doing that due to logistical, um, you know danger yeah. issues um and then we do other events around like last summer we did the pavilion series down at the art gallery um this year we're looking to do some stuff around the village through the through the uh, summer we're doing a woodstock 50 year anniversary show um so we work with a feels good orchestra which is like a compilation of Fredericton musicians um and we do anniversary shows uh, every couple of years when like a big one comes up uh, so we did like the last waltz, uh, the farmer's right. waltz, all the, a few years back, and this year's Woodstock. Um, so I mean, it's usually we're doing something on a monthly basis. We do like uh, Folly Presents shows at Stanley's Wharf and Halifax, and so you know we're um, it's kind of like the standard, um, very similar to the Shivering Songs layout, very similar to the Paddle Fest setup kind of thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. So where did the name Folly Fest come from? <laughs> so um in the first interview well in the first discussion with sean dunbar uh at picaroons mm -hmm. um talking about the festival and we pitched the idea to him and his response was you know sure why not every year my accountant has something called dunbar's folly which is a project which is just ridiculous so mm -hmm. this will be dunbar's folly for 2009 and so we got home, we all looked at each other and we're like, so Folly Fest? Folly Fest? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No question. Like, wasn't even, it instantly we knew that it was going to be called Folly Fest. Yeah. And you awesome. know there's another Folly Fest? Yeah, is that overseas or something? Yeah, in the UK. Yeah, I saw that. I saw, actually, I think I saw a Folly Fest post about it, how it's mm. your sister festival. Or... Yeah, the ones, uh, it's amazing because people get them confused quite often. Uh, and they've been going for a similar amount of time as we have. So uh, we've really kind of, uh, we're, we're buds now. It's neat. They're like, you should come. <laughs> like, well, it's pretty close after Folly Fest. And I imagine ours is pretty close to yours. So I don't know if that's ever going to work. Yeah. It, would it be similar scales population wise? Or do you know, do you know much about it? It's a completely different animal. It's like a, in a, it's like in a uh, town <laughs> I think like kind of like a street festival um, run by a very different group of people. Seems like more like uh, older middle-aged professionals that do this for fun kind of thing. Not that we don't do it for fun. Um, right. And then they, it's, it's like kind of linked in a historical aspect as well. Um, so, I mean, it looks like it'd be really fun to go to, but it's a totally different festival. Yeah. If you go there expecting, New Brunswick Folly Fest, you're going to be shocked. Yeah, you will. I mean, if you're going to expect Folly Fest, chances are you probably won't be disappointed because you're probably just going to roll with whatever happens. 
Right. Um, but uh, that makes sense. It will be a surprise for sure. <laughs> so with our Folly Fest, for like future plans, do you do you guys have any growth ideas or like where do you see Folly in five years, would you say? Well, I mean, we want to keep the crowd. I mean, maybe, you know, if a couple extra hundred people show up, that's great. But we want to keep the crowd about where it is, but it's all mm -hmm. about adding new things and making the festival that is there that much, you know, just enriching it, right? So, yeah. uh, for example, you know, we have our Folly Awards that we do, the Campsite Awards. Uh, we um, we do, like, different types of awards for the best cleanest campsites, and we, you know, uh, give out drink tokens for, for uh, like, good deeds, and and we, you know, we really, we really try to push the festival, like, community vibe really, really, really hard, and this year, right. uh, we came up with this really fun idea, and we're going to do a folly spa. What is it? A folly spa. <laughs> okay, do explain. Yeah, so I was just pausing for dramatic effect there because I think of it's course. Really exciting thing. So uh, the folly spa, yeah. <laughs> I can uh, I can even add in more time if you want. Yeah, no, that was I think it was perfect. The beat we had like the <laughs> what? Good, good. Uh, yeah, the folly spa. So um, when you're thinking of how to improve a festival, you're thinking of what is wrong at a festival. And come Sunday, what is wrong is people are super grungy. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, even if you're swimming the whole time, and we do have stop showers, so I'd say on average, it's probably less grungy than, you know, say, like, a random field where you don't have access to water for, for days. Um, right. But with this, uh, you can get your shower in the morning, but then if you want to freshen up, you can go in, you can get your makeup touched up, you can get full festival makeup done. We're going to have a registered massage therapist there. Uh, we plan on having, uh, we're going to have someone doing hair. Uh, and then we're going to have like a station in there. And it's going to be a nice kind of like area where it's going to be nice and soothing and relaxing. And we're going to have a station in the middle. That's a fresh enough station. And essentially anybody can go in, throw down five bucks, and we'll have like bamboo, organic baby wipes to freshen up, you know, the, the freshen up of and, uh, and gum right. and, and tampons and pads and condoms. Uh, and like uh, sunscreen and, and aloe and, and baby powder, you know, like all this stuff that's, that's just really would come mm -hmm. in handy. You can roll in, freshen yourself up and, and hit the rest of the evening feeling, you know, just fine and ready to go. That sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. I, <laughs> we're pretty excited. About it. It's a pretty funny, pretty funny project. And I mean, we came up with it in the middle of the winter kind of just trying to come up with ideas to do different things and we've kind of just put it uh with abby and shannon and they've just been running with it and finding all sorts of really great connections for 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 local estheticians and 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 hair and, and it's gonna i think it's gonna be really neat to see yeah that sounds awesome yeah um yeah. is there anything else new this year that like of note well there's the grand theft bus live uh recording Right. So that I, did, I did want to talk about that. Yes, that is uh, something that we've always, speaking of recording, making a record at Folly Fest. Right? Mm -hmm. um, now, it's a, uh, it, Graham from the bus came to us with the idea uh, when we were like, hey, would you guys be interested in playing? You know, like last time we played the main stage, it got rained out, and that was a few years back. So it's always nice to have you always bring a really amazing party. And he's like, well, they only play occasionally you now and when they play they want to have like they, they want to have play for a reason they want to just play to play they like you know they're at the point now where they've been playing for almost 20 years or maybe even more i don't know and yep. you know it's so they love folly fest um but they always put on a great show there so um he had the idea of recording the set and doing a vinyl album uh because they haven't done anything in vinyl and we thought it was a really great opportunity for that so uh we, we decided to do it and help them out with it. So basically what's happening is Feels Good is producing it. So okay. we're, we're looking after all of that. And, and then um, they're doing two sets, one on the main stage and one on the Yippie stage. Uh, Yippie stage Saturday night, main stage Sunday. Uh, so okay. Just to make sure we have a lot of good content, a bunch of new stuff, a bunch of classic stuff. Uh, and then after that, we're going to 
and I, you know, send it in and, and do all the things you do and, and have it pressed and ready for uh, the Christmas season. But uh, yeah, so the idea is to like really get it because it's going to be really cool, right? Like, yeah, uh, one to catch the hope, you know, knock on wood, hopefully catch the spirit of Folly Fest in the recording itself, uh, which is always so hard to describe after you've left the festival itself. And and just to be asked to be part of a project like this, like I, you know, those guys, like when I started Feels Good, Grant that bus was like my, you know, like I, I, I idolized those guys and, and I still idolize those guys. So I think uh, we all did slash. Do yeah. Us. Yeah, totally. Like they're legends uh, among us that just, just are the best people and, and have influenced so many musicians and those musicians have been in turn influenced. Like we're looking at three generations, three many generations of musicians influenced by that band. You know, and like, yeah. So for them to ask to do something like this, it's nice. It's it's like a, it's like um, I think it's like a, it's like a benchmark almost. You know. Yeah. So just on the heels of that, like they're obviously a dream act, even though they're like we're we're kind of spoiled. Like they're a local local band that we've been seeing for twenty years, but they really are a dream act. And every time you see them, it's just it's like oh yeah. I, I don't yeah. even know how to explain it. You know what I mean? No, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's not. It's not like we we all look up to them because they've just been playing for so long. Yeah, you know, like they've been. No, they're top in, notch. Like absolutely top notch for forever, and you know you always get better. So like those guys just like they're like a like a, a fine wine or something. You know? It's just getting better and better. Yeah, no, and it's crazy. Yeah. Like we could have festivals in New Brunswick and book big acts from the the states or from any international act. You put Grand Theft Bust on the on the lineup, and it sells out quicker and easier than any other band in the East Coast. Oh yeah, yeah. We are. I mean, it's. It, I think we we all know it, but we are so spoiled for musical talent in this province and in this area of Canada. Like the a number of bands per people is crazy, and like good bands per people, it's amazing. Like yeah, we, from here to you know, Nova Scotia. Best, yeah, like this this year especially, like our festival is like seventy percent from the Maritimes. You know, like seventy percent of the people are playing are all from the Maritimes, which is so cool. It really is. It's yeah. it, like you just don't really realize how lucky you are because we we just been brought up in it. So it's it takes it's going somewhere else and like going looking for music. I mean, like yeah, that was all right. They're like just not finding anything anywhere, and so you're like, wow, we really have a good year. Yeah, exactly. Are there any dream acts that you hope to someday have at Folly? Is there anything that you've kind of been actively trying to book or anything like that? Well, Oka um, has been a long process to right. this happening. Pretty much since the last time they played Folly Fest, we've been trying to get them here. Um, so that's really like this actual, like we've been reaching out to them. They've been busy, busy, busy. Um, a year before last Folly Fest, I reached out to them about 2018 Folly, and they were like, no, but 2019 we're in. So like this show has been actually planning it two years and trying to get it going for like six. So we're oh, really, wow. really pumped to see them playing. And they're doing two sets. Uh, they're doing one afternoon and one night. Uh, and man, the, the difference between Oka during the day and Oka at night is so amazing to see. I don't know, have you ever seen them? No, I haven't, but I'm pretty excited about it this year. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Uh, so that, and I mean, our, honestly, if you want to talk about a dream uh, act, it would always be Cake. Um, oh, absolutely. And, and we did actively pursue it for a bit, and we had to take a hard look at what our festival was. Right. And make a decision. It's like, do we want to bring, do we want to spend our entire band's budget on one band and mm -hmm. then add an additional budget on top of that and then have an extra 400 people show up that maybe haven't been to Folly Fest before and maybe don't understand what it's all about and maybe think it's just a rock show, you know? And then yeah. the vibe changes and then things are different. And um, we just decided that, like, that's not what Folly Fest is. That's not what the village of Gagetown is, you know? It's not a place to bring yeah. in. Yeah. So, yeah, and it would bring it would bring in a lot more of our audience and stuff. But like, it's just like, do we really want to 
our growth has always been slow and steady mm -hmm. uh, since the get-go like we haven't had that year where we double our audience you know so like that means that the idea behind the festival has been able to grow slowly and steadily so everyone gets it right like year after year people leave that festival grounds on monday morning and it is spotless yeah like, there's no garbage because people pick up after themselves they're they're sorting their garbage it's like it's amazing so yeah it really um, is so we're really happy with the route we've taken and it's kind of exciting too right because that means we, we get to look we get to be going out and looking for these bands that no one's heard and hopefully catch them before people hear them like you know for example talk when we had talk like we snagged them right before it was just never gonna be possible for us to grab them again yeah that or was like, perfect timing or the floozies or dumpster funk you know like all these bands are now just like not something we can do uh, mm -hmm. and, and that's what's so exciting about it right because at the time you're like maybe maybe they'll be but like and you know there's some there's some near misses we've had like we were so close to booking golf pack like that would have been, been insane crazy. yeah yeah so anytime someone posts and like hey folly golf pack would be amazing we're like quiet come on yeah. <laughs> like maybe we can't that's our entire it's our entire festival budget would be just to bring them in you know now because they've exploded so much yeah yeah you're kind of like a talent scout in that sense where you want to get the acts that are just about to explode but just before they do so you can just yeah. kind of yeah afford and it's crazy it, you know? how, it yeah and it's crazy how close it gets too right like with something like golf pack if we had put an offer in like a month earlier before they went on the tonight show we would have been able to book them and we would have had them locked in, you know, like, yeah. um, and so with talk, like if we had booked them, if we'd waited another month or so, they would have, you know, did, we wouldn't have ever gotten them or like even, um, oh, partner, we had partner last year. They have a tiny desk concert now, you know, like, so it's, it is, it's pretty exciting stuff. And, you know, it takes a lot of people to kind of like with their ear to the ground and, and yeah. seeing what they see and, you know, got to go to lots of festivals and, and all that fun stuff. Yeah, it's, it sounds kind of like fast paced and exciting. It is, especially this time of year. Everything is very fast paced and very exciting. That's funny to see what it's like. Folly Fest has essentially become my new year. Uh, and I think for a whole lot of us, our new year, because right yeah. after Folly Fest, we start working on the next Folly Fest and then the build and the build and the build and everything's leading up to that. And then afterwards, you're like, okay, and we start yeah. all over. <laughs> but it's yeah, certainly so exciting, like, that's for sure yeah when you're trying to book bands do you put out feelers for like say do you get like 50 percent of the bands you go after or is it even less than that uh i mean with headliners it's yep. probably closer to 15 to 20 percent like yep. there are a lot of ideas that are floating around before anything gets locked in you know because it's got to work on their end it's got to work on our end and there's so many moving parts that like to yeah. actually have it work it's it's been getting a lot easier because as you just go by, we're, we're booking our larger acts earlier and earlier. So mm -hmm. to get them locked in and kind of anchor them in uh, makes things a bit smoother. But um, yeah, I kind of illustrated my thought there. I was just looking at my dog sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's perfect. You, you answered it. That's great. Oh, okay. okay great. <laughs> um, so you, you mentioned Oka as a huge highlight and a huge get for this year. Um, as far as like other past highlights, are there any, Anything that come to mind? Any bands that were like a a big, big get for you guys? Oh, Man Man for sure. Oh yeah, With they were awesome. That that when we had Man Man, that was like a dream. I was obsessed with them at the time, and when they <laughs> actually considered our offer and then said yes to it, it was I I didn't even know how to handle it. And then um, like the the signature sound guys were. I mean, they're always on point, but everything was just because they, they had their own front of house guy so everything was just so dialed in and i remember standing directly in between you know um right and left stage like right in the middle right like in front of the uh the sound tent and just yeah like you can't you can't <laughs> explain the satisfaction you feel when you're like this is like this band is here and playing right now and it yeah. sounds so good <laughs> you know? and i'm responsible for it <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh yeah it's um that uh, that was probably as as far as music goes that was way up there there was also another year um when uh early like probably fully two or three and old man uh 
Ludecky or Ludica, or I always pronounce it wrong the first time. Right. <laughs> um, he was playing, and it was a sunny, beautiful day, and everyone was like, you know, there was probably just a hundred people out dancing, and <laughs> there was this group of kids right in the middle of the dance floor building a sandcastle. <laughs> it was the most <laughs> wonderful thing I'd ever seen. Like, just with their little buckets and shovels, digging away, people giving them lots of space. Or like last That's year, awesome. last, last year during, uh, I forget who it was, but someone was playing in the afternoon and it was really nice and it poured the night before because it always does one day, you know. Uh, and this little, little kid was in his rain boots and just rolling around in the puddle, like started with the splashing and then like worked up to really get into it. And, like the parents were just watching and letting it happen. And it was <laughs> so much fun watching. It was like that kid was just having the best time of their life, getting so muddy. And it was totally fine, you know? Oh, absolutely. That's that's festival mindset right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get like a certain satisfaction from knowing that you're responsible for what's going on when everybody's having such a great time? Well, there's definitely, it's like, you know, the whole, the whole um, crew pretty much floats through the weekend, right? Because it's mm -hmm. like, uh, especially because, you know, there's, it's not just me doing this. There's a whole team of us working just around the clock. Like Tanya, our volunteer coordinator, uh, the hour she puts in to making sure that things run smoothly and that the volunteers are looked after is crazy. Jen Pilar, our new president of the board, uh, officially voted in at our biannual board meeting at Paddle Fest. Uh, mm -hmm. She does so much work with the vendors and stuff. So, like, we're all basically, like, it's it's how you get through the weekend, right? Because you're pretty much going on three, four hours sleep. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there definitely is a sense of... Um, it's almost, I'd almost, I wouldn't say, I'd say it's like wonder at what has happened from the group of us putting in this effort to see it come to. Yeah. Yeah. And I suppose it's so stressful leading up to it. That is kind of just a huge weight off the shoulders once it's kind of in motion and being. Yeah. yeah, it's exact. And I mean, the stress, the first couple of years, the stress was definitely almost like quite terrifying. It's like, what are we forgetting? Mm -hmm. What's mm -hmm. going to happen? you know are they going to shut us down <laughs> like all this stuff um but now when things are going really smoothly we're like okay so all right we're still waiting for um you know the proverbial shit to hit the fan here uh and it hasn't happened so what's going to happen when's it going to happen if it doesn't happen soon it's going to be real big like mm -hmm. and because uh, there's always something right there's always something that happens that you got to figure out a lot of problem solving has to happen on the fly last year for example um when we had to get our water tested because we were off of the well okay and uh we got our water tested late last minute last minute and um we didn't do it right so we turned on this faucet that was attached to a farm building that was basically filled with poop and <laughs> poured it for a few seconds and then filled up a bottle of water and <laughs> sent it to them uh, and so it failed because we didn't clean the taps. We didn't let it run and freshen up. We just gave them stanky water. Right. Uh, and it failed on Thursday afternoon before Folly Fest. Mm. Now, usually this was like, okay, so you don't have a tap. That's not a big deal. But we have been strictly anti-bottled water from day one. Like there's never been a bottle of water sold at Folly Fest and there never will be. Uh, we don't right. allow bottled pop. We don't allow... Like we do allow cans of pop um, in certain scenarios. Just paper, but, paper water box. Yeah, we we do our very very best to uh, <laughs> keep that stuff down. You know, like um, yeah. So when all of a sudden our water supply uh, has been deemed undrinkable due to our negligence in preparing a proper sample on a Thursday afternoon before Folly Fest, and it's going to be a really hot weekend, and no one brings bottled water to Folly Fest because they know that there's free water there. Uh, that's a huge problem. Definitely. So we wound up, we wound up uh, troubleshooting. Like I was sitting there, it was Mumble and I sitting there, uh, and we had literally just said, "Like I wonder what's going to happen this year." Stephen Lewis busts in the office door. He's like, "Guys, the, the test failed. What do we do?" And so Stephen called the test lady and convinced her to stay half an hour after the place closed on Thursday afternoon. And this place is like a time locked door that locks at four. So she was standing with the door open for half an hour 
waiting for Stephen to show up with the sample. So what we had to do is we had to figure a way to purify this water. So I found us a plumber and Mumble found us a um, UV filter. Wow. Because <laughs> so, that's what you, I guess that's what you do is, is if your water's not uh, purified properly, you put a UV filter in and through the miracles of science, it zaps all the impurities. Um, right. Yeah. So a uh, buddy of mine, Eddie Compton, <laughs> working with Greystone, um, worked with him for years, called him up. I was like, please tell me you have extra guys that you can just have them drop whatever they're doing and come to Gagetown right now. And so he did. And so a guy came out and Mumble found a UV filter. Uh, and so we had it timed down. We're like, okay. So we had everything in place. We had a guy coming. We had guys ready to rush the sample into town. It was like 3.45, and she could only hold the door open until 4.30. It's a 40-minute drive from Fredericton to Gagetown. So we had it figured out. He was like, if this guy doesn't show up with the right part in the next 30 seconds, it will be physically impossible for us to get this sample in in time. And doesn't he just peel in right at that exact moment? <laughs> like, running with That's the crazy, the man. Plumbers, like, the plumber's at the pipe, like, with his fingers out like he's accepting a pass and like it was so crazy so then all this happens and mumble and i look at each other it's like do you want to move some picnic tables we both just burst <laughs> laughing because i was like well you know what are you gonna do that's crazy yeah it was it was pretty nice and that wasn't like that last year was the most stressful relaxed folly fest i've ever had because it was very relaxed because we have so many people doing such a great job that i have more time to actually sit and watch some music and hang out with friends and, and i'm not just running yeah. back and forth the whole time but at the same time, there were so many, it, because it was, it was so fortunate, it was so well run because um, so many things happened that if it wasn't running smoothly, would have completely caused the festival to grind to a halt, you know? But because everything was running smoothly, when these things popped up, we just handled them. All right, well, I gotta, I gotta end this, but thank you so much for doing this, dude, and hopefully everything runs smooth this year. Yeah, thanks a lot. It was, uh, it was nice to chat. Well, uh, we'll see you in a few weeks. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, man. Okay. Bye. Yeah.